Urban Therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two, and this is your daily go get ism number five hundred and ninety for May fifteenth, two thousand and sixteen. Tonight, I want to talk to y'all about borrowing money, lending money, and how it can affect the relationships that you had. I mean, if that's not one of the easiest way to mess up a relationship between two people, what is? You know, I mean, some people don't like to borrow money. I would be one of them. Some people don't like to lend money. I would be one of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind lending money. But the thing is, you kind of have to make some decisions when you decide to lend money to somebody. Because you really shouldn't lend money to people that you don't know. You never know what, what, what their intentions are or whatever. Some people borrow money in order to establish relationships. It's, a, it's one way to show good faith and to actually... Gain faith in somebody that you don't really know that well. So sometimes people will do that. They'll go ahead and borrow money from somebody that they don't know all of that well. Just to show them that they're the type of person that can be trusted with money and that they'll pay them back. It's not that bad of a, of a concept. And, and a, a, a way to establish a relationship between you and somebody else. You may have some other motives that are intertwined within within that that borrowing thing but that's more of the more positive ways to illustrate what can happen when it comes to borrowing money borrowing money or lending money out you know there are many people who have lent money to their family members and friends and stuff like that and they never got the money back and winds up sour in the relationship it's just, it's, ugh. and it, it, sometimes there, there's like a third party, there's like a third party, uh, there's like a third party relationship, which can mess up a relationship between three people instead of just two. And what I mean by third party relationship is this, let's say I'm in a tight spot and I decide to ask you for some money. Now, maybe you don't have the money that, that that I need to borrow. So you set it up for me to be able to borrow money from somebody else that you know and you and you vouch for me. So you set it up, you tell you tell whoever it is that can lend me the money, like listen, man, you know, son is a du a good dude. He cool, man, and you know, he, he's good with money and all of that. And, and I'm telling you, I can vouch for him. You know, I endorse this cat. You know, lend him this little bit of money and um, and he'll definitely pay you back. This is a good look. It's going to be all right. He'll pay you your interest or whatever you want to charge for him, charge to him. But he's he's good money. So they vouch for uh, they vouch for me. I don't pay back the money right or I pay back the money loosely. Which throws up red flags in the person's mind that that is lending me the money. So let's say I borrow $2,500 and I don't pay the $2,500 back the way I'm supposed to pay it. Maybe I'm supposed to pay back $500 and something dollars over six months. $500 and something dollars over six months and until the debt was paid with the interest and all of that that you charged to me. Maybe the first month I only come up like $400 and something. And I promise you that I'm going to make up the, the rest of the five something before the next payment is due. But I don't do that. I don't do that. And I don't keep in contact with you. But the next month, I come through with the 550. But I didn't make up the 100 and something that I didn't pay the previous month. So now, you go to my man. You go to my man like, yo, man, you vouched for this dude. You said he was good money. You know, he's paying me back the money, but he's not really paying right. You know, and he's not keeping contact with me and all of that. And when I call him and ask him for certain things, he either blows me off, doesn't answer my call, the calls, doesn't return texts. You know, something is wrong. What's going on with your man? So now it's looking like my man that vouched for me, he's partly responsible. He's getting chewed out or being looked at sideways because I'm not doing the right thing. So that third party situation gets all messed up and it's not a good look. If you can't if you can't afford to pay money back to a person, you really shouldn't borrow it. But people do it all the time. Some people borrow money without the intentions of ever paying back. And they know that they don't have any intentions of paying back. 
Because when you when you intend to pay money back, you you show good faith. At least you pay some money back. But if you have borrowed money from somebody and you never paid them back at all, you ain't had no good intentions. You ain't you you didn't care about whether they had the money or not. Or whether they got their money back or not. You probably took for granted that they don't need their money. They don't need their money. You know, he's just like, uh, you be alright, she be alright. That ain't cool. Because that makes people get on some other shit. Some violent shit. Or some other shit. And it's that's not good. And it's all over a couple of dollars. And it may what may seem like a little bit of money that gets borrowed or whatever gets really, really inflated when you blow somebody off like you just ain't gonna pay them. Cause that makes a person feel like a sucker and like they should do something. And it amazes me that people take chances like that because that ain't cool. Boy, that ain't cool. It's not smart either. Boy, that ain't smart. It's crazy. People do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> so, another way another way that, that things can get all soured and messed up is a third party. No, no, not third party. Check this situation out. I get paid off of a case. I get some case money or some inheritance money. Let's say, tragically, a family member of mine died and left me a bunch of money. But maybe I'm not that good with money or maybe I needed to put some money away in a place that isn't official but trustworthy. So it's safe, but I don't want to put it in a bank. I don't want to put it in an institution. I don't want to report this money. You know what I mean? But I got this money. And uh, so I asked you to hold this money for me. Let's say it's 15 grand. 15 to 20 grand. I asked you to hold 15 to 20 grand for me. Because I know that you you have your own money. You, you know, you good. You, you safe. You good with money. You you ain't going to take my money and, and, and spend it. You don't have no motivation to do that. You know, you, you paid. Plus, you're trustworthy. You ain't the type to, to, to take anything that doesn't belong to you. So, I lend you this 20 grand. I mean, no, not lend. I give you this 20 grand to hold for me for a rainy day or whatever. Because maybe maybe I don't want my girl or my wife or, or the crackhead that lives with me at home or something. I don't want them to find this money because they're going to steal the money or ask questions about this money. And, uh, and I need to keep this on the low. So I ask you to hold it. And you hold it for me. And I know it's cool with you, so I don't even check up on it. Maybe I check up on it first few few months or whatever. You know, like, yo, everything cool with the cash? And you tell me, yeah, man, I'm straight, man. You know, I, I ain't, look, I got that money. So maybe a year or two goes by. And now I need the money. I need to come pick up that 20 stacks that I gave you to hold for me. Now maybe being rational, I figured like nobody just gonna hold all the money for you. So maybe, maybe I figured uh you probably pieced off a little something for yourself. I mean you deserve it. I let you hold the money. You you held it for me. You know you did me a favor. If if I if I put the money in the bank, the bank would use it to invest in all that kind of stuff. So why wouldn't you? So I come to get this there's 20 grand from you, maybe expecting only to get back like 17. And maybe I even factored the, the three grand in. Maybe that was my way of giving you three grand, but I tested you to see if you would take it for yourself. But I come back after a year or two to get this 20 grand from you, and you ain't got no none of the 20 grand. None. Zero. You spent my whole 20 grand. And you ain't got it to give it back. You ain't gonna pay me back the little 20 grand. But somewhere along the line, you done spent the 20 grand. Emergencies came up. Shopping sprees came up. You pieced off a little bit. Pieced off, pieced off. Had cookouts. Get together. Bought expensive wine. Gambled. Bought drugs. Invested. Fucked up the money. And you don't have none of that 20 grand left. Now what happens? You think I'm going to 
take that 20 grand on the chin? Probably not. It's a lot of money to take on the chin. So what I'm going to do? Take you to court and sue you? There's probably no record of that money because I gave, gave you that money to hold. I didn't write a check. Promissory note. It's going to be rough. And that's, that's one of the ways that you can really mess up a relationship between people. It's not a good look. Because with that kind of money, and now you're in need, you might be more than willing to do something terrible. It's not a good look, man. It's best to just keep... keep if, you, if, you, if you really need money and you're a trustworthy person... You borrow money in good faith, pay the money back fast. Because people remember certain things about your character when you mess up money of theirs. It's not a good look. It's not something that people forget about. And it's not something that people are always willing to let slide. People get kill people over this kind of stuff. And that's not, that's just not a good thing to be a part of. It's, that's. Over the disrespect. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, when it comes to borrowing and lending, when it comes to friends, family, associates, and all that kind of stuff, it's probably better to just keep the lending and borrowing to, uh, towards institutions. Because there's some people. There's some people who borrow money constantly. They always borrow it. They, they borrow from pawn shops. They they uh, borrow from loan sharks. They borrow from, from, from people. They always have to pay money back from their paycheck because they borrow from check to check. They always borrow. And, they, they, and once you get into a habit of borrowing, man, that is a hard habit to get out of. My late great step pop always said, oh, do not get into the habit of borrowing. Manage your money better. Always put a little bit of money away for yourself. Is you never know when a rainy day might come up or whatever or, or, or things might might break down or whatever and you don't have no money to, to dig yourself out of this hole. So don't put yourself in that position. He said, but don't get into the habit of borrowing because that's a hard habit to get out of. Like borrowing money is sort of like sort of like gambling. It's hard to stop gambling because you're always looking toward the next score. Borrowing money is sort of like that. You start to depend on other people. They don't work for you. Why you mess up your money consistently and constantly. I'll let y'all later, man. My Right Body Better Fitness Program next Saturday. Get at that. The 21st. And I'll let y'all.